Tēnā tātou, i mūra tō tātou karakia, mi hi atu ki a koutou ko tāi mai. He oi me wai ho te rāhatanga ki tō tātou. Hoa, tere, ki te whakarāhiri i a koutou i tēnei pō. He oi me tīmata tātou ki te karakia. Mino i tātou. Kia tau rā, ko ngā manā ki tāna te mengaro, ki runga iho, ki tēnā, ki tēnā tātou. Kia mā hea, kia rā, te hua mā kihi, kihi, kia toi te kupu, toi te reo, toi te mana, kia toi ko ngā toi Māori. Tūturua, te whakamaua, kia tīna, tīna, haumie, huie, tāe, kie, kai a koe te rā, koe e hoa. Nau mai, nau mai rā rau mai e hikama, nau mai haere mai ki tēnei whakawhitinga kōrero o te pō. Welcome to this opportunity to speak um, with Creative New Zealand about the fund Toi Tupu Toi Rea. Um, joining us this evening to explain, to explain the, um, the elements of this fund, of course, are Kirea Mateua and Amanda Hiraka, who are Arts Practice Directors Māori and Art Practice Director Festivals. And also, I believe online is the funding Māori advisor, Te Otinga Hohaia, um, who you will have um, a direct contact with um, for your application. So sit back, I hope you got the message from Kereama to grab yourself a cuppa. Um, so um, welcome to this opportunity. Use the time that you have um, to pick the brains of Kerema and Amanda. And in that keeping, we're just going to um, tag in Amanda here to give us some guidelines around ngā whare, ngā tika ngō te whare, right, um, housekeeping. So kaya koe te wā, Amanda. Kia ora. Uh, so as you will know that this uh, Zoe is being recorded because you had to uh, uh, agree to it. So we just wanted to let you know why we're doing that. So um, this Zoe will be available for people that are unable to attend tonight or um, if you'd like to watch the session again. Um, and unless you speak up and ask a question, it will only be Kiriyama and myself and Tere um, visible in the recording. Um, you're very welcome to ask a question at any time it's all very relaxed tonight. Um, you can either ask via the Q&A um, function at the bottom of the screen um, or raising your virtual hand. Um, the chat uh, on the side, we're just going to use for um, whakapanongatanga. Um, you can ask a question anonymously if you don't want people to know your name, so um, you can choose that function as well. Um, and I think that's about us. Um, like I said, it's a pretty relaxed session tonight. Um, if you're just joining us now, um, include in the chat um, your name, your art form, and where you're zooming from tonight. Kia ora, Teri. Um, Kirea mahi kupu anō tāhau. Kau rupia. Um, kau. Um, ko tahi atu ki te kaupapa. Pea, he oi. Uh, tuku mihi atu ki a koe e hoa uh, mo tēnei uh, mahi. Uh, Kia wātea ai tō tātou whare ki te maria ko tāi mai, mā re re e mihi ana. Whānau, we're going to attempt our own Q&A session here. Jerry Springer, Oprah, who knows, who knows where this may go, but we're going to attempt our own session of asking Kirema and Amanda the background to the fund so that we get the best out of this time. And of course, the first question has to be um, Toi Tupu background. Can you uh, explain a little bit about that, um, Amanda Kirama? Yeah, yeah um, Toi Tupu uh, Toi Rea is a fund that Creative New Zealand um, has been offering since 2013. Um, it was originally established um, from some feedback we heard from the Ngātoi Māori sector about supporting emerging uh, Māori practitioners and artists and setting up a um, ded dedicated fund so uh, these emerging artists could um, apply to us for some money to help uh, help their practice maybe put on a project. Mm. Mm. And then in 2017-18, there was a roadshow, some of you may recall that, um, when Creative New Zealand travelled the Motu and asked uh, what, the, what, what we could do um, that would support the arts development of Ngātoi Māori, the practitioners and our organisations. And the same messages came through. Uh, we needed a separate fund for emerging artists. 
um, we need to uh, soften up some of the criteria for, for some of our emerging artists, because at the time the, the, the criteria was exactly the same as uh, uh, the, gen the arts grants fund. Um, so we saw um, emerging artists almost competing at the same level as festivals or established artists. Um, and really a Toiti Putoi there should be really about um, supporting emerging artists to, be, to step out of, um, who are just coming out of tertiary or just coming out of training, um, to be able to develop a piece of work, to develop uh, capability, at, whether that's um, your, your craft or your, the business side of, uh, um, uh, of your business, of, of, of uh, your, your kaupapa. Um, and, and so uh, through all of those conversations and through all of those, those hui, uh, what we heard is that the current system didn't work. Kei to pai, and we understand that too. We understand that our soup, that our systems and structures that we have here at Creative New Zealand are robust. They are very, they are very robust, and they've been refined over years and years. But they still don't serve the broad spectrum of Ngātoi Māori artists and practitioners that live within the ecology of Ngātoi Māori. Uh, we, we were given the opportunity to have a look at the Toi Tipu Toi Rea Fund, actually all of the Ngātoi Māori funds and how we're able to support our sector a lot better. Um, and, and what we heard is that our artists want another option, another way of being able to apply for funding. Um, I've, always, I've always asked the question, if a carver had the option to carve the application or a weaver got to weave it or a dancer got to present it or a storyteller got to come in kanohi kite kanohi and have a conversation and not on paper what would that look like what would the success rate look like for Ngātoi Māori what would the makeup of our emerging artists who will then become our mid and senior practitioners and then our ihore eventually what would that look like in 20 years time if we don't make changes now if we don't listen to our sector and what they need um, then we've, we're following that trap of do the same thing, get the same result. Um, so really, we want to say that we've heard uh, and we hear you every time that we are in the, in the sector, that it's not working. Uh, and so we've, we've had a chance to have a look at that. Uh, toi Tipu Toi Rea is the start. And hopefully we want to look across all of our funding um, applications, our systems processes. That means assessment. That means reporting. That means how we have a relationship with one another. Um, now, I've, I've, um, before Creative New Zealand, I was out in the sector, and I found it really hard to try and find a way or a, or, or a, or a group of uh, like-minded individuals that um, that can help me progress my my art form. Um, and so we want to remove some of those barriers. So tonight we're going to talk to you about um, two opportunities that we have. One of them is the fund, the Toiti Pretoria Fund, and the other one that will run uh, concurrently will, is the, the program of capability, and really capability, what does that mean? It's really us supporting emerging artists. So we'll support you in whatever you need to develop yourself, your arts practice as an emerging artist in transitioning to become a professional artist. Yeah, I think um, when we came to look at this um, this project and um, and the funding, um, we went back to that feedback. Um, and what you'll see is what we're trying to do is um, answer the um, feedback around supporting emerging practitioners more. Um, and their arts development and their practice development and their career development. Um, the second thing that we heard was um, there was a, a desire to create a network um, of, of practitioners across disciplines, across art forms. So um, this is what the um, program is trying to achieve. And the other thing that we, we looked at was the whakatauki that this um, fund has been named after as well. Um, Kiriyama brought up an important point that um, this project is, is the first, first cab off the rank of um, how we at Creative New Zealand are um, redefining and relooking at our, um, our funding. Um, Tipu Toirea is the first one, um, Ngātoi Māori, and who knows where it's from there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I guess some of those options that we have looked at, what you're being asking for are things like video application, things like um, maybe somebody come and sit next to you and um, and help you to develop your, your application. Um, what we're going to do within the, the program as well, that if you're interested and you register for, 
we will break down exactly how to write a solid application. You, you will be able to use that as a template for every other funding organization um, that there is out there to be able to support you, the development of your practice and the sustainability of your career as well. Um, you know, when we talk about success, it's subjective, right? Sometimes it's about becoming uh, uh, sustainable within your career. And other times it's about tonga tukuriho. You might be the first person in your whakapapa for a long time that has the opportunity to bring toy Māori back into your whakapapa, back into your whānau, um, to express mātauranga Māori in the way that we know best and through our art forms. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about um, the, the new fund. So there's two programs. I think you'll think of it like a waka haurua. Uh, the fund and, the, and the, the, the program, which is set up to support emerging artists. Um, and kahai uh, ngātahi. The fund itself, um, we had, we've had a look at, at, at some of the criteria. We've uh, sort of loosened up on some of the wording and the criteria within that. We'll go through that soon. Uh, we've taken some unnecessary things out um, to make it a lot easier. However, we don't want to make it too easy that you become successful here and then you go to apply somewhere else using that same methodology um, and then you, will, you may not be as successful. Um, so we want to give you all the tools necessary so that when you finish your project uh, and the program, that you are fully equipped to take on the big bad world because it's pretty tough out there. Unless somebody shows you the ropes, unless someone shows you exactly how what you're looking for in a budget, exactly what we mean by strategic outcome, um, then I, I guess you may miss out. Um, and so I, I guess if I have a look at the success rate of an art of, of toy tipu toy there over the last couple of years, it's been quite low. And it's not a reflection of the caliber of mahi that's coming through. That is amazing. It's around the application writing itself. And we know um, that Māori are significantly, um, have significantly lower uh, uh, scores in literacy and numeracy than the rest of the country. So if you're entering into this process, you're already marginalised. So what does that mean? That means that you probably won't even apply. And that's what we're seeing out there. This programme is going to help you to build those skills. It's going to create a network uh, between you and, and a cohort of other emerging practitioners. We're going to be inviting uh, other senior practitioners of every single art form that you that you indicate to us that you want to learn more about. To, and they're going to give you first-hand knowledge and information of what it means to be emerging, mid, senior, and what it means um, to be, uh, an, uh, I guess, um, an excellent uh, uh, vessel for Mātauranga Māori through uh, your art form. Um, so should we talk about the fund itself? Yeah, thank you. Mm. Oh. Yeah, Ewa Ma, that's um, some amazing background on the fund. Um, and I see we have 35 um, attendees in the chat room, et cetera, et cetera. Whanau, feel free to drop your name in the chat, where you're from, what art form you work with. Um, I can what I love is that you are confident to say I'm a poet I'm a painter you know that that's that's a skill in itself it's a confidence in itself I do all the weird stuff the weird arts yeah weird arts is important we all agree because heritage you know once was weird and it's now Tonga to Guiho so we're going to move on to a question that was at the top of your list and top of our list and is now in the um, Q&A's um, if you have a question, and Wama, drop them into the, the chat there, drop them into the Q&A there. We have, um, we definitely do have a question there from Henrietta Tēnā Koe Te Hoa. Tēnei mea te emerging artists, ya te tikanga, ya te whakamārama. So the, 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 this is the question that emerges all the time. What's an emerging artist? What's an established artist? This fund is for emerging artists, nō reira homai, ngā kore no arahi. So give us, give the audience an understanding of what that is. All right, an emerging artist in terms of creative New Zealand's definition. There are um, three areas that we consider um, a track record, I guess, or um, to establish your um, identity as an emerging practitioner and you need to identify with one of them. So the first is that you have had um, 
specialized training or practical experience of this of your um, area of practice. Mm. Um, the and um, that includes tertiary yeah. training. And that could also be um, you, you know, either in a learn mode or from a tertiary provider. That came from my from my uncles and my kaiwa. And that's just that's um that that's just um that's, that qualifies as well. It's probably even has a little bit more mana for, for, for different people as well. So. And and that's a good point. So if um the training that you have had um is recognized by your peers or mm. your community, then that's considered um um a uh a, a, yeah, an emerging practitioner. Mm -hmm. um, and the third area is um, if you've had a public presentation of um, at least one work um, in the area of your arts practice um, and for which you're applying for. So that's three things. So a public presentation, tick, awesome, you're an emerging practitioner. Um, you're recognized by experts or peers in that field, um, or you've had specialized training. So those are the three areas. And, and if you're unsure, just give us a call. We'll introduce Tiltinga Hohaia, who's the funding advisor, a little bit later on, and she'll talk you through those, those, um, those details. Um, and, you know, that, so that's a CNZ definition. Um, here, uh, that, that that's not the case for everybody. Uh, a presentation could be um, a performance in, at the Morai. Um, it could be a presentation in front of your whanau. Um, you might have done a, a, a zui, or you've you've gone online to sell some of your mahi. That all of that stuff to me counts as well. Uh, yeah. So namanu pirere, ne? Those who have just finished, they 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 they're ready to fly out of the kohanga. Um, ready to fly and just need a little bit of help to make sure that they're on the right direction. Um, and it doesn't just necessarily mean rangatahi either. Um, you may have been a, a, a carpenter most of your life and then you've decided, actually, I want to learn how to make taonga kuoro, no mai haere mai. And you might be in your 50s, kei te pai, no mai haere mai. And we will, we will, we will support you with um, you know, helping you with funding applications, things like that. Um, and then tee you up with some of our top practitioners. We, we, we have close relationships with, with Haumanu, um, with some of our most esteemed carvers who um, see the same problem as well and are always uh, uh, um, happy to help new emerging artists making their way or make breaking through to become professional artists as well. Yes, there is. There's one in the chat again. Kaisa, is there any supporting funds for people who are emerging based off someone who is doing this from a hobby? Um, uh, Kaisa is saying that she doesn't have um, any training, etc. Yeah, So um, if you if there is a particular part of your craft, see you you already have those skills, and what you're looking to do is refine them or create a body of work for a show or create. Um, Oh, I'm not sure. You might you might already um, have an idea what that might look like for you. Then this is the fun for you. And I think we, you know, just just to be transparent uh, from from the get go too, um, we we only have a hundred thousand dollars. Now that sounds like a lot of money, hundred thousand um, dollars over this first year um, to support could possibly be ten artists, ten emerging artists through this fund over the next year. So far, you know, we're still working on the background. Uh, if we see that the demand is a lot higher, then of course we're going to go, you know, and do what we can to try and um, um, uh, make up those funds in other places. Um, but a hundred thousand dollars, if the if the top end is 10 k, that's only ten people that can come through. Um, so mentioning that just to manage the expectation as well, um, uh, as as we're not going to be always able to support everyone. Here we regardless if you are successful or not, you are still eligible and you're still able to come to the, uh, the Toi Tipu Toi Reo program. Now we've set up um, a series of wānanga um, and this is with established artists, this is with other funders, this is us breaking down what a budget looked like. We'll, we'll give you templates so that you can start to set yourself up as well. So, um, uh, you know, uh, what was the corridor on the weekend? Um, you know, I hate the word failure, but it doesn't define you. It refines you. And this is what we're about, is uh, trying to 
help you to be successful within, within your own practice and within your business outcomes as well. Ikere, the audience online um, is based between Bali, Perth, Waitomo, Ōtautahi, so huri noa te ao, mm. kaua no Aotearoa anake. Um, so talk us through um, who can apply, do they have to be based with an Aotearoa, hea te kaupapa? Mm -hmm. So you have to be uh, Māori, a New Zealand Māori, uh, so Aroha Mai, not Cook Islands Māori. Uh, or Tahitian Māori, New Zealand Māori, you have to be a New Zealand citizen or resident. Um, it's okay if you are living overseas, hey, to pai tira, as long as you're still a, a, a resident. Um, you know, our funding comes from two sources, two main sources, through um, through uh, government funding, through MCH, and then through the lotteries. So we have uh, an obligation to report back to, to those sources. Um, and you know, I guess the vision is to promote and advocate for the arts for the benefit of more New Zealanders. That's what our mandate is. So, um, like, mm. yeah, Anga Tefina Māori um, and an, an emerging practitioner. Yeah. Any more questions, Teddy? Yes, yes, there are a couple of questions. Tyler has a question and you know, this may be a Liz or a Te Otinga question around any funding funds to support Māori business startups. Um, there's, it, and it depends, I know, of course, related to the arts, Grad New Zealand, not just business startup, but capability building potentially. I don't know, you might have a comment around that. Yeah, well, this um, program, so we've got the... Um, support program um, which as Kiriyama said will have um, three wānanga um, this year which will be focused on um, uh, understanding our funding processes, um, being able to write funding applications and a budget and things like that. Um, we'll also be working with the cohort or those who have signed up to be part of this project and um, really understanding what they need um, to build their uh, practice, either as an arts practitioner or um, a creative professional. So um, whether that's about setting up a um, small business or mm -hmm. could be tax or um, it could even just be mentorship. So, um, so we've planned the first, um, this, this year's um, worth of programs and then we're really keen to work with, with those in the cohorts to, to figure out what they want to learn and then bringing on board those expertise. So if it is a creative business, then yeah, there, there probably will hopefully be some um, expertise that we could bring in to support that if that's you know where the whole cohort wants to head. Absolutely and 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 you know we have many partners in the sector as well. We know that TPK haven't have a Māori startup uh, fund as well. So what we might do, if that's what's popular within uh, the, the, the suggestions from the cohort, then we will just bring them to our hui. We'll ask if they're available to come in and talk to you about what's available um, through their, their funding opportunities, uh, what, what criteria looks like, what the application looks like, and we'll support you to, to make a, a a strong application through that, that as well. We also have the uh, BBC fund, um, uh, the Business Capability Fund here at Creative New Zealand. And uh, we had our first round of that a, a couple of months ago. And it was really successful for, for my practitioners actually. Um, and we will be having another round of that particular fund uh, later on this year. Um, but but of course our mandate is, is, is within the arts and Ngātoi Māori. Um, so it has to be um, focused around the arts practice. I'm sure it is. I don't know why I said that. Kia ora. Um, e ma, I can hear the cooks calling. So you've got 30 minutes. You've got 30 minutes before the aunties are going to um, get you to the table. E ma, if you have a question, please drop them in the Q&A or in the chat. And you can also see responses from our team in the chat. So have a look through that. Um, so one of the questions that Caitlin, a question that Caitlin asked is what do you expect as an outcome from this fund, from this program? Good question. Very, very good question. Well, there's a number of ways we could answer that. So firstly, mm. if it's, um, say if it's the fund part of this program and you've applied and succeeded um, in receiving funding, then that's the outcome that you want to achieve. So we're supporting you to, um, to meet that outcome. Mm. Um, for the um, Toitipu 
program itself, um, we're hoping that um, um, this is that will create a network of um, practitioners who feel confident to, um, to, to really take off in their career as arts practitioners and creative practitioners um, that will, um, that this cohort of um, emerging practitioners that we'll be walking alongside with will um, then come back um, to Create New Zealand as our um, external assessors um, or to actually help shape um, what Toitipu looks like for the next cohort as well. Mm -hmm. So um, we're really wanting to start to establish a, um, a, a reciprocity um, between Create New Zealand and um, arts practitioners as well so yeah, and, hopefully that answers that question and opportunities come across our desk all the time um, and if, if those opportunities are specifically for um, uh, emerging artists then um, this this cohort um, especially if we know what the needs are will be um, I guess our, our priority to be able to um, support you through this year through the next year matariki to matariki um, to be uh, to to grow as a as a um, strong practitioner. Um, you know what? Um, in in the past, there's there there meant yeah, there was sort of an expectation that you had to put on a big show or a big exhibition at the end of that. If this is really about you just developing your arts practice, creating a body of work, creating the relationships, doing some research and development into what type of what angle you want to be able to create your 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 mahi from, or create frameworks for um, how you how you work, then that's enough. That's enough. There's no expectation for you to do a big massive performance at the end, or have an exhibition, or have a, a finished whare <laughs> nui. Um, you might just have a whole set of plans and drafts, and and you might come out um, with um, being able to have a mentor. So if you're a carver, your mentor might be, oh. Geez, Danny Kipa, let's say, um, man, what one hour with that guy would be amazing. But you know, you you might you might even feel, actually, I'd love to approach him to be my mentor. There's ten thousand dollars there. That ten thousand dollars is there to support you, pay you a wage, pay for all your materials. If you need travel, accommodation, um, you know, you know, business costs, your phone and stuff, and also to pay your mentor as well. Um, and I know it's only ten thousand dollars. Not I'm, I'm saying only ten thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. I could do with ten thousand dollars right now. But after wages go out, after travel goes out, after materials go out, it, it's you, you know you're not left with very very much. So uh, for me, um, it's if you can get something out of this that's going to help you develop your arts practice, mean that's all we're after. So Kirema Amanda, I think this is a good time for us to discuss the change in the program and the fund because Waitahi has asked a relevant question around um, the Toitupu Toira fund. If it's 100k to distribute in the next financial year, does that mean that the maximum amount that can be applied for is still 20k or can you, um, can you speak to this amount being the most one can apply for? I think this is touching on what are the differences between previous toy tipu toy area and what the current makeup and structure of that fund and program is. Yeah, it's a good question. So um, Waitaki's correct. Um, previously um, to this offering, you could apply for up to $20,000. Um, we're changing it because um, we wanted to um, focus on it being a project and um, like Kiriyama said, um, reducing the expectation that um, emerging practitioners sometimes put on themselves to create a big project. So, um, so within the fund this year, and we're only having one um, funding round, that's um, another difference this year. So there's one funding round with $100,000 to distribute, and you can apply for up to $10,000. Now, that doesn't mean that um, you can't apply for projects that will um, that are greater than um, $10,000. It's just that Create New Zealand's contribution can only be $10,000. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I guess when the fund first started, the, the limit was 7,500. 
um, and and then it raised up to, to 10,000. And when it was at that 10,000 level, we saw the numbers of emerging artists shoot through the roof. And you would have seen in some of our, our comms, some of those artists who were a part of the program and, and where they are now. Um, I mean, Alien Weaponry were one of them. And, you know, it feels like I'm name dropping because they're so amazing. Um, but they were given a small grant to be able to develop a small part of, of, their, of their craft. Um, and really, at the end of it, you're not going to become alien weaponry, but it's a footstep um, into the, the direction um, best for you um, and guided by uh, experienced um, practitioners. As well. um, and some other changes that we've made this year, mm -hmm. not only um, for the amount you can apply for, but again, it's that... Um, that skills building, um, capability building program that we're offering alongside. Um, I mentioned that we've only got one fund offering this year, but that's because um, everything about this fund has also been aligned to the Maramataka. Mm -hmm. You can probably talk about a bit about that. Yeah, I guess, you know, um, and Mihiana, Kia Kui, Te Papa, Erangi Mata, Mua Koutou, Heni Hotorini, um, oh, katoa, and we've seen um, a real pivot and, and shift from the whole motu and a desire to be able to align with the maramataka um, on what days are, are best to do what. Um, and when we had a look at our maramataka and we had a look at the old calendar, we noticed that decision making we made uh, uh, lined up with fido or, or, uh, or application deadlines. Or, yeah, and you know we. Uh, we are making a conscious shift uh, based on Mataranga Māori to be able to um, support our sector um, from a, a Mataranga Māori perspective. Um, so what does that mean? Uh, it means open and closed dates are all aligned to the best times of the Maramataka. Um, Decision-making uh, dates uh, are, are done during the Tangaroa Moon phases. Um, and, and every single key date across that funding calendar um, aligns with the with the best moon phases and, be, and the best seasons to do those things as well. Which is why we moved to um, one one funding round. Um, in our conversations with um, Hini, she, we were talking about what we wanted to achieve um, and how we had two funding rounds. And she said, well, actually listening to what you want to achieve with this fund, it's better to, um, to move the funding round to spring um, where you're busy growing and, um, you know, wanting to blossom um, versus having another round in um, autumn when that's not necessarily the best time to be um, thinking about putting yourself out there. In fact, it's better to um, start um, accumulating knowledge and resources, mm -hmm. which is why our um, capability building or skills acquiring mm -hmm. um, component of the um, Tuitipu Fund uh, program is, is in the, um, is next year instead. And we've really noticed, um, actually, the this, this sector have been pivoting uh, anyway and starting to align some of their kaupapa to the maramataka anyway. Um, uh, so, so, and we're seeing it included into a lot of projects, and we want to support that um, any any way we, that we can. Um, yeah, so that's one of the changes, um, and we'll go more into detail about that stuff when we get into the to the program itself. Yeah, well, Ma, we have twenty minutes um, in the session, but I'm sure we we're more than happy to continue to answer questions. And um, which reminds me that. Um, you can email um, the funding advisors um, for support. So that's funding at creativenz.gov.nz. And also Creative New Zealand's website um, has a plethora of information on funds, on how to apply for funds, um, on the best practice for funds. So feel free, that's www.creativenz.gov.nz. Um, so the, those will all get popped in the chat. And we've got quite and, a few questions. Yeah, and if you sign up to be part of this group and this um, skills building, we'll be doing a lot of work with those um, practitioners that are part of that group on learning how to write funding applications as well. And um, the, yeah, we've got three wānanga um, before the uh, Toitipu Toirea Fund itself opens. So we'll be concentrating on how to shape your ideas uh, how to um, 
create your budget and write that funding application so you're ready mm -hmm. to apply for um, the funding round in mid-September. Um, I do want to say, however, if you don't want to be part of the um, skills building, that's fine as well. Um, the, the fund itself will still be open to people outside of that cohort as well. Mm. Actually, I thought that, that would probably be a good segue to go to our, um, our website and just maybe walk through people through uh, now you're the application you process. Screen. All, all technology, <laughs> here we go. And so while you're doing the technology, just the um, Mayoha asked, how do they register for the Wānanga? There's a link that's been popped in the chat um, that will you can register for those cohorts. Um, while you're loading those, Amanda, those share screens, there's a couple of other questions that you might be able to um, answer quickly. Um, will Creative New Zealand give guidance on appropriate um, fees to be paid to applicants? Yes, really, um, really, really good questions. Um, Amanda's about to share screen and she'll uh, take you through, <laughs> through the process <laughs> of how to, oh yeah, okay. We'll be able to talk you through the process of how to apply. Uh, really, really simple to register. It's a couple of clicks and all that is is kuai kwe, no hea kwe, and hea to to nama waia pea. Uh, really, really simple. Um, and once we get an idea of what the cohort looks like, then we can start shaping what those wana are going to look like. Um, so as soon as we get that uh, uh, have that ready, we'll, we'll, um, we'll jump on there. But what you'll see are there are two opportunities. There's the fund and the program. Make sure you apply for the right one. There's, um, there's, a, there's a big difference between the two. Um, and we'll see how see if we can go into it now. Otherwise, I can share the screen. Um, oh, we're all good. It just won't let me. And so while Amanda's doing the techie stuff, um, our tech guru in the background says he can share for you, oh. Amanda. So there's oh. a lifeline there. Right. So James can share, which would be right. great, James. I'm going to try one more time. Oh, yep. Oh, no. Yep. Kapoi, here we are. So as uh, Teddy uh, mentioned earlier, creativenz.govt.nz. Um, check that into the top bar and it'll lead you to this page here. So this is the Creative New Zealand website. Um, you know, have a little, have a little tutu, have a little scroll through there. You'll see all of the opportunities available to everybody, um, from um, capability building. There's um, guidelines. There's um, different criteria, um, and there's also um, other information about um, successful artists and, and, and whatnot. But what you're really interested in is how to get to the website and how to apply for those things. So, if on the left hand side of the screen, you're going to scroll down to the bottom of that. And at the bottom um, is my account. Says my account. You're going to either register or sign in. And now, if you've already share from here, James. Uh, James, if you want to pass it over, I'll see if I can do it this time around. Uh, so... This is what it looks like when you're yeah. In so, the portal. so once you've registered, so either you've either registered prior to this, you might already be a client, or, or you might already be. Um, in our system um, and if not just register that just takes uh, one minute you'll get an activation code sent to your email and then you're in once you're in uh, and you and you've logged in you'll see these three boxes here uh, applications reports and goals now don't worry about reports and goals just focus on the applications and let's click into applications All right, so at the bottom here, if you scroll down these orange boxes, they are all the opportunities, funding opportunities that are open right now. So uh, you'll see the Toy Tipu Emerging Artists um, uh, Program there. And at the bottom, you can see um, the funding opportunity. Now let's just quickly go into the uh, Emerging Artists Program. And this is how you apply. So uh, you're gonna uh, log in as yourself. So apply now. And if we scroll down a little, um, this gives you a little bit of information about uh, the program itself. Can we go to the next page? 
and applicant details. So you're just going to put in your details. So somebody called Kiriyama Te Atua, whose phone number is 12345689, who lives on 21 Jump Street in Maori's place, has applied for the uh, to be a part of the cohort. Um, great. So, so basically, it's just this part is just to check that your registration is correct because once you register, um, these other funds will be available, you know, now and into the future. So really, it's just about um, a, a checkbox to make sure those details are correct. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so if you go across the tabs at the top, there's uh, proposals. Uh, if you see at the top there, said this section is not a requirement, not, but not. it's optional. So yep. if you want to write something in there, kai tupai, cut off your mic. Same as attachments. This section is not a requirement and is optional. Again, up to you. Kaya te tikanga. Yeah, so to be part, to sign up to be part of this cohort, basically you just need to uh, sign up, um, register, and uh, sign in here. And that's all you need to do. If you do want to include some information about your art form or what you do in the proposal or the attachment section, you can, but it's mm. definitely not a requirement. Yeah, save those details and that's it. You're, you're, and then you submit them and you're away. But can we go back to the fund now? Oh, one moment, please, Paul. And so, yeah, well, Ma, can you um, do some questions while I um, yeah. go back? Yeah. So, yeah, well, Ma, the, um, Amanda refers to um, if you'd like to join this cohort, he momo kapa, ne? he momo ropu, he momo waka te cohort. Um, Kapiki ka. Kapuki tata ki runga i tēnei waka, uh, mā te wānanga, mā te kōrero, mā te akoranga. Um, so that's the programme, um, part one, and then part two is the application. So um, this is the expansion and the newly created um, programme for Toi Tupu Toi Rea. Like Amanda said, many of you will be aware of you rock up, you apply, you see who gets funding. No, now it's a learning wānanga beforehand to learn skills beyond toi tupu toi rea, um, funding applications relationships, and that's the cohort. Are you reading now, Amanda? <laughs> sure, I was enjoying your um, segue, actually. Yeah, and actually, I'm confident after that one, Inga, that you'll have the skills to apply for all the other funds that are available for you as well, not just toi tupu toi rea. Um, yeah, so, so we showed you how to apply for... To um, become part of our our orpu. Yeah, and now we're just going to go into the fund itself, which you don't, which is not open yet, by the way. Yeah. So, so we're just going to click in. Just give give you a quick look at this. Of course, we're going to break this uh, down a whole lot more. Um, in the one, I yeah, in the one, and, and if you're part of that, that cohort, you'll get all of those, all of the videos, all of the zoes. They'll be available to everyone. Now, if you're successful or not within this fund, you know it's still contestable funding. It's we still can't change the resource that we have. You are still eligible to be a part of this program. And it doesn't mean that um, uh, you, you won't be able to access any of the offers that are that we're offering uh, that we're offering here as well. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, that's that's a good point. So if if you aren't successful in receiving funding, um, you are still part of of um, the Fano, and we are still working with you to create that um, offering next year and how you want to learn how to be a creative professional. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll be working with you to, to, um, to create a, a bespoke program for yeah. next year. Anyway, here's the yeah. application. Now, I'm not gonna go through it um, step by step. I'm, uh, I'm conscious of time. Yeah. Well, this is pretty much it. Um, but what basic stuff are what, how, who, if we just click on those, um, those things so um, you'll see that there's three questions that you have to answer now um, you told us that you want a video application if you wanted to record yourself talking about your kaupapa record it as long as you answer those questions though what is it you want to do um, what is the background of your project why is it important um, what are the outcomes you want to achieve as long as you cover those things in your kōrero kataya so what you'll do is you record yourself, make sure that you, you um, cover all those questions and you'll submit that as support material. We'll walk, walk you guys through that. I'm conscious of time, so I can't go through every step. Now you might want to have a video for each of them, if that's what you want. Some people feel more comfortable writing, some people don't. Um, whatever that is for you, um, we, 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 we will support that. Um, so the who section, so that's all the people that are part of the project. So you might even have, uh, 
you come out to are talking about uh, oh, this is my this is my moko and uh, sometimes he's a player but uh, he's really great the art say and uh, I really want him to be a good kawa. Then he, he carries on and and um and you know and you might even interview your koro and upload that as well. You know, just just as an example, um, we don't have to play by the same rules that we always have, um, in terms of articulating yourself in te reo pakeha, uh, even te reo Māori, that can be hard as well. Sometimes uh, te reo awaha is a lot easier for our people. Um, support material. So this is where you might upload things like support letters. Um, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> just we've had a bit of feedback um, recently that support materials, people think that that's the place you go to get help um, for writing your application. No, it's actually just uh, attachments. So um, just so you're aware of that. The stuff that supports your application. Yeah, that's right. Cool. Yep, that's probably a quick. Really quick, you're yep. going to sign that and then, then you're going to leave it over to the assessors. As I said before, um, we have all of our assessments are done externally so we, we're not the decision makers we um, work with the sector um, across every art form within Ngātui Māori now if we have visual artists applying we make sure that visual artists are the, uh, you know experience uh, visual artists uh, assessing those applications same for customary art same for performance art um, uh, and what we hope is that after this program after this experience that these um, this cohort or everyone that's um, participated in this program and creating um, a, a project from the from the fund that you'd come back and be an, be an assessor as well and that's paid mahi but it really gives you an opportunity to contribute to what the makeup of the ecology of Ngātui Māori looks like especially for our emerging artists I think that that, that emerging artists fund should only be um, assessed by emerging artists um, and so that's what we're hoping will happen in the future. At the moment, we've sort of got a good balance, but but I, I prefer that balance to be more um, emerging, supporting emerging with the guidance of our established artists in the background as well. So, Fano, I hope we're on the we, we've got a I hope we have a larger understanding now that there are two approaches to this fund. Um, once again, it previously was just apply and survivor of the fittest, né? but now there is a wānanga to support people to develop their skills and to approach funders, to write applications, all those technical steps. So this is this is the work that Kirema and Amanda have devised after their experience in this area, understanding the needs of our people to say, we're not getting it quite right. So hence the newly reformed um, Toitipu Toirea Fund we have lots of questions and only 10 minutes left. Right. So this so might I, be the thing. Yeah, uh, Actually, really, really quickly, I might just introduce everybody to Tiltinga Hohaya, who is our funding advisor from the funding services team. Now, she would be the first person that you make contact with. Um, when you when you pick up the phone or uh, you email Creative New Zealand, when you want to speak to a, one of the Māori advisors, um, Tiltinga will be there and she'll be help, um, be able to support you through any of the questions you have around the criteria. So I'm not sure if, she, uh, if she's on screen yet. Yep, uh, she is. I can see her. That one. Uh, kia ora so uh, my role is that I'm the Funding Services Advisor Māori. I'll be uh, looking over your applications as you submit them. Um, and this is a wonderful opportunity for all our emerging artists to come through. Um, so the uh, the part that I'll be participating in with you is the uh, is the funding side. Um, and there's also an opportunity now where you can actually um, book some time to speak with me of any questions that you may have around the application. Uh, and the, the days that I've noticed is a Tuesday and Thursday. Um, and so for me, you can book up to 10 minutes or 20 minutes, depending on what you want to know. Um, and it's fine, you just, uh, there is a, Kitty, I'm a there is a, a link to the booking. Uh, yes, I can talk about that. So um, what we're, we're trialling as well, trialling lots of things um, with Toitipu this year, is um, a booking system. So similar to when you want to um, get a haircut. So um, on the website, um, if you would like some um, funding application advice, or you want to talk a little bit more about what eligibility is for an emerging artist, those sorts of things, you can um, go to the link on our website um, with Te Ōtinga's um, uh, contact details. Um, it'll come up 
you've seen them before, what they're like. Um, so you pick your appointment. Um, sorry, a colour and a wash or no. <laughs> <laughs> Funding advice or um, eligibility question, um, tick which kind of appointment you'd like. Um, and with the magic of the uh, interweb uh, Teotinger's um, available times will come up. So you can see immediately what her availability is and you can um, see, and you know what your availability is. So you can just pick the appropriate time rather than having to go back and forth with each other trying to coordinate yeah. um, calendars. So um, yeah, we're really keen to hear how this works as well. So hopefully um, it makes it easier for you too. And Tilting is an absolute pro in this department. So if you have any questions about any of the funding opportunities uh, whatsoever, whether they're in the, in the Māori Arts uh, Fund or, or Pacific or General, um, Tilting will be able to guide you. And Gilda, that person in the background. <laughs> so um, <laughs> For the Toitepu Toire um, Fund, the bookings option is only available via um, our website um, for those particular funds. And hopefully, if this pilot works, um, we'll, uh, I guess, we'll spread it across the organisation and across the um, the funds as well. So currently, it's just just via the Toitepu funds. Yeah, yeah Wama, um, that booking system will answer some of the questions that are sitting there um, in the chat. Um, one of them is, can and applications, can applicants apply for equipment? This is something that happens every year. Can they apply for equipment in the application? Um, you, there is a, what we call a capital expenditure, and that is anything $500 or more. So if it's going to cost more than $500 or more, the answer is no. Kia ora. Can the grant, can the fund be used toward higher education? No, it can't be in this in this sense because that um, unfortunately the way that the way that government's set up um, and education has its own ministry. Um, our guideline really is that, that education is the responsibility of the Ministry of Education. Um, he, he, if you can't find this program anywhere else. Um, and there's no other other place that you can apply for, uh, uh, for support. Come and have a chat with us, um, and we might be able to um, have a look what that might look like. Because you know there'll be nuances, there'll be there'll be things that we might not be seeing right now. And um, higher education, if you mean like a to a kind of trainer scheme or mm. mentorship, then that you can definitely apply for yeah. that. So. But if it's Not the finishing qualifications, yeah. Yeah. if it's like for your uh, to sign up at um, Waikato Uni or, or, or uh, the University of Canterbury to do the um, Masters of uh, Māori Indigenous uh, Leadership um, program, yeah. no, kind of, uh, aroha mai. Mm. And again, Fano, all of these questions, funding at creativenz.gov.nz. Um, if you place those there, then um, those can also be answered there. Um, Israel asked, what kind of support material you might have touched, you actually touched on this a, a few moments ago, what kind of support material in terms of letters or endorsements will be needed? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the, the more the better, I say. I think the, the old guideline used to be five pieces, but I say I, I say put it all in. Anything that helps to give us an idea of who you are, what you've done, and what you want to do. Um, people that are supporting you, people that can speak on behalf of you, a support leader. I know sometimes it's the hardest thing to get back from people, and you're allowed to write it for them. You're allowed to write it for them and say, this is my um, uh, 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 muka and... Um, and yada yada yada, Kate's play, and then they sign that. that yeah, that's cool. I think this is a, it's a really interesting um, question because you know how much is too much or not enough. Um, probably also depends on the project and yeah. what aspect you're applying for as well. So yeah. I, I would say that um, yeah, have a conversation with us about what yeah. what support material you need. Sometimes um, it's even um, support material for your budget as well. So um, mm -hmm. do you need quotes, for example? So mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's a, a, a good question to ask individually as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so, so uh, yeah, contact us and we'll, or, or come to the Wānango and we'll, we'll yeah. um, work it out together. Yeah. This is a quick question from Caitlin. Is this fund for individuals or can groups apply also? Um, groups can apply, but keep in mind it's only $10,000. That's only going to go so far. Um, and 
uh, it's it's better designed. This program is really be, best set up for to support the individuals based on that 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 limit of funding. However, what I would say is that if you did apply for a project that you knew that you wanted to de to develop further with the collectives, you'd use this fund to set that up, set up all the conceptual thinking, set up the draft, set up um, you know you know what that what your work might look like, and then you might come in for a a second. Um, second phase, and that might be in the arts grants round, and that that round is up to seventy five thousand dollars, which you will be able to pay people appropriately. We have a a guideline, um, and that's come out of um, some of our remuneration policies that um, all arts practitioners must be paid higher than the minimum of twenty five dollars an hour. So twenty five dollars is the minimum that you can pay yourself and pay others. Anything under that, the assessors might go, oh, you know. Because we know artists, you know, if we, we artists ourselves, we would probably not pay ourselves, make sure everyone else has got a claim and then, and then we go away starving. Yeah, how, <laughs> however, you know, in kind or koha is really important. What yeah. I would say is that, you know, sometimes people don't want to be paid, but what you do need to do is acknowledge their contribution and your budget. So have it as an in-kind um, support cost. Because um, it's really important that we acknowledge um, the worth of someone's um, uh, uh, worth and value of someone's work. Yeah, yeah, you know, especially our established artists and kaumatu and kuia, they're not always going to take down food to our few, but we might want to just go and do some grocery shopping and drop it off, something like that. You know, we could, let's have a call it all. Make sure that they are acknowledged. Yeah, well, Mom, there's some questions there, and uh, I think that they really are questions that um, you'd answer in the Wamanga anyway. So, um, particularly if there are questions you still have, it is worth signing up for the Wamanga. You have until the 31st of August to sign up for the Wamanga, um, and it will answer those questions around appropriate fees and payments um, to those working on your projects, and also around what is a great application look like for the funding rounds because you'll get a lot of applications right mm -hmm. understanding what's a great application and what might be the flavor of the day or what, what might um, turn into a, um, a good project um, those are all subjective and it all comes down to what lands on the table um, in this last moment Ehoma, is there anything further you'd like to add about the fund cool. um I guess just to reiterate that there's two offerings this year. First is that program where we're um, building a uh, group um, of emerging practitioners to learn off each other, to build skills. And the second part is that funding round um, which opens in um, mid-September. Um, again, that this um, Toitipu Toirea is our first cab off the rank and the new way in which Creative New Zealand is working. Um, uh, what else can I say? That's that's probably my top of mind. Yeah, and I, and I guess when I think about sustainable careers, um, you know, there's lots of different factors that go into what that means um, uh, for different art forms. Um, and you know, one of the most common ways to become successful or, or sustainable within your arts practice is really the diversification of the platforms and the ways that you express your art form. So if you're a carver, you, you're probably already into tūtamoko, and you're probably uh, a visual artist as well. You, um, you, you may already be in the NFT space. You know, so understanding what that ecology looks like for your particular art form. Um, and, and a big part of that too is being able to make collaborations, um, work with other like-minded individuals, whether they're in the same um, reanga or same um, uh, cohort as you, or you know, you're all emerging, or you might be working with senior practitioners as well. Um, this, re this, this is really going to give you opportunity to open up your networks and, and um, create, I guess, interconnectedness amongst our emerging artist sector. Um, and that's a good point. Uh, it's what I'm excited the most about with um, this new program is working together with you mm -hmm. to um, create something that you want, you know, next year and to build your skills and your um, career. So that's pretty exciting for me and hopefully for you guys too. All right, this is this is a pilot. We, we might have it wrong. And by the end of the year, you will be telling us, actually, this we want it like this, we want it like that. And 
mark my words, we'll listen to you and we'll make sure that we get everything shaped to exactly how you want it, um, the, the best that we can anyway. There's still like, yeah, system things that we've got to work through and, you know, technology isn't quite ready for, for us yet. Um, but we, I think what we're trying to say is that we're here to listen and we're here to adapt to, um, and the best we can. Yeah. And I'll ask Kirama to close us soon. Um, we are interested in putting a call away around um, the emerging artists to support them because this is a lifetime skill of applying, of applications, of working with, of relationships with funders and others to support your passion, your work as artists. Um, we'll be on screen for a few moments, so feel free to copy all of the, the notes in the chat, um, scribble those down, copy them, uh, screen capture those so that you know the links and where you need to go to, um, who you need to contact. Um, but for both the poor, for both the gorero, what did they were so? Kiremba kaya kute wa hei fakakapi. Aye, aye, tina kute tere. Tena First place to see the sun, the tide of pity is always on.